Life's too short to drive boring cars. Maybe you're the type of buyer that wants a luxury car that's going to last more than the lease term. Maybe you want to possibly keep it after three or four years. I know I do. I typically keep my vehicles more than five years plus. So I want to make sure that I'm getting a great vehicle that's reliable, fun, and that's going to last well beyond the warranty period. Like, no. Maybe more something like this. But whatever it is, life's too short to drive boring cars, but I'm gonna share a list of 10 luxury vehicles that will likely last well outside the warranty or the lease period. Let's get into it now. So the first one on my list of cars that's likely gonna last a long, long time, and you don't mind owning it outside of warranty because it's built well, it's built sturdily, and it's meant to last probably hundreds of thousands of miles. But it's not this one, it's the Mercedes E-Class W212. What we have here is the W211. This is the older version up to 2010. And the biggest way you can tell this is, do not buy the car with the round headlights. That is bad. I mean, look, it's a leaker, there's oil under there. Sure, it has the great same grill as the W212, but it's missing the little logo. This is not the car you want. You want the next generation. What you want is the 2010 to 2016 called the W212. It actually had has headlights a lot more like this. Now this is an S-Class, but this style of headlight gets fixated on the E-Class and then you have essentially the W212. E-Class has always been that middle of the road car, you know, C-Class entry level, S-Class top of the line. E-Class has always sort of felt somewhere in the middle, usually a little higher scale. But unfortunately, Mercedes was going through some rough times and the leaders of the charge up at Mercedes-Benz were looking to save a lot of money, so they cut a lot of corners. They made everything cheap. Things didn't last. They didn't hold up. They broke. They whittled away. Interior rattled apart. You had all kinds of leaks and shorts and engine problems and leaks. And you even had lots of rust. Now, this one here is pretty clean, but a lot of them actually had rust. This W211 was the one to avoid. The W212 was a great, great car. It was actually a game changer for Mercedes because they finally realized that durability, reliability, and safety were actually important to the consumer. So they actually addressed those issues. The 212 also was very solid looking and was actually very solid it for the long term. It didn't all rattle loose. It didn't rust out as quickly. And the fundamental engine that was under the hood of the W212 was built for the distance. So was the transmission, which other than if it was stored for a long period of time, occasionally you'd find the transmission might get a little jerky for a short while. But other than that, they weren't known for being a problematic issue. There were a few issues even with the 212. And some of those were the air suspension would eventually let go. It could be a compressor, could be the rear airbags. Any number of those components could leak air and eventually the vehicle would settle down on its haunches. A little pricey to fix, but again, it was a premium Benz. The interior had a few shakes and rattles with time, but nothing unruly. Actually, buttons wore well, and actually even the leather upholstery held up very, very well on the 212 models. The wiper system sometimes would fail. Eventually, with significant miles, you'd sometimes get vibration in the steering wheel, which usually meant bushings, engine transmission bushings. Sort that out, and actually you were smooth as silk again. And another known issue was sometimes the window regulators, there would be a problem. Sometimes by pulling the door panels, it was a lubrication or adjustment issue, but often there was issues with activating the window and the window not actually automatically opening or closing for that matter. So there was a few odds and sods, but as a whole, mechanically the car was good to go for many, many miles. It held up well, it was structurally sound, and really it was a car worth keeping way beyond warranty period because it was built from a time when Mercedes kind of cared. And the next one on my list is an absolutely delicious car. Still licking my chops over this one. That's right, we're talking about the BMW 340 or 440 Grand Coupe as we see right here. Now the Grand Coupe, of course is based on a four-door sedan which means it's got four doors and still essentially has a trunk now any three or four series cars are not necessarily fitting the bill but the most reliable ones the ones that you'll probably want to hold on to the longest have the 40 series designation like that we've got the 440i and you'll notice it has some great tail lights it has dual exhaust tips of course carbon fiber on there beautiful it has a little diffuser on the bottom has little vents and it has an absolutely delicious paint job. As you can see, it's almost a matte finish. This one here has a carbon fiber rear tail on there. Amazing and stunning wheels, but that's because it's got the M performance package. And of course, it's got the delightful little rocker panel down there. 
and adaptive LED by BMW. It also has carbon fiber finishings on the front end here, as well as all the way along. This one is nicely equipped with the M Performance Pack. Extra vents and the cool mirrors, of course, with the lights and the indicators. And you've got a little sunroof, why not? This one has the wonderful ZF Auto transmission, which is almost bulletproof. And the important thing to note here is these cars take a real beating for the first three or four years. As a matter of fact, by the fifth year, three and four series cars in the BMW world typically drop down to less than 50% of their original value. But where it gets interesting is this engine, it's called the B58, which is essentially based on the 40 series car, means it's one of the most robust engines in the BMW lineup today. It's also the same engine that they use in the current generation Toyota Supra. So there's gotta be some value in that. That's right, they're actually bulletproof and they're showing to be far more re resilient than any of the other turbo inline sixes before that and definitely anything with the V8s, which you wouldn't find in a three series anyway. However, I would suggest staying away from the B48, which is the four cylinder, not that it's necessarily a bad engine, it's just the B58 is the engine to have. And if you find yourself keeping this beyond five years, you'll find the depreciation curve flatten out quite a bit more, and then it becomes a car worth owning. And honestly, with that drivetrain, the fit and the finish, this is a car worth owning for 10 or 15 years for sure. The BMW 3 and 4 Series with the B58. So the next one on my list is an Audi, and there's not too many Audis that I can say are relatively reliable. But if we're talking about an A6, S4, S5, post 2012 with the 3.0 T, that's a supercharged three liter V6 engine, makes about 333 horsepower. When equipped with the ZF transmission, they're bulletproof, they're almost flawless. And here we're looking at an S4. Basically anything with the Audi brand like that has the Quattro all wheel drive system. So they're very robust when the going gets tough and the snow and the water hits the road, these things can tackle it all. Now, of course, being an Audi and being an S4, like that one right there, they basically come decked out. There's lots of upscale features to them. The performance is there and they're never lacking for features. I mean, you've got sunroofs, you've got interesting dual colored mirrors, upgraded alloys, but look, we have the S4 calipers. You've got side skirts that are more prominent than the standard A4 models. Classic Audi tail end, but you get more prominent exhaust tips and a more interesting rear splitter. Now Audis take everything that Volkswagen knows and they just make it a lot better, nicer and prettier. Now the 4.2 liter V8 is also another pretty solid engine if you get certain generations. Obviously not every single engine is flawless. When they put in the S4 of that earlier generation, they do have problems. But later on, the 4.2 when plugged into the R8 and several other models were actually far more robust. And the issues were upgraded timing chain assembly and the hardware because that was the problem with the V8. Outside of that and carbon fouling, really the V8 is also a pretty stout engine as well. Now the fourth one on my list is almost laughable and it's a Lexus RX, what we see here. Now why is it laughable? Well, because it's a Toyota based product, it's built for the longevity. It's built to last the test of time. What we have here is the RX 350. That means it's got the three and a half liter V6 naturally aspirated, that's right, no turbos to cause any extra heat or undue wear, and it makes just over 300 horsepower. So it has more than enough get up and go to light your day. Now they're also quite attractive. I mean, they also have the great wheels on there. As you can see, this one's covered. It's brand new off the truck. It has these great little tail light finishes on both sides, even though it looks a little fake down the chute. And you have the conventional rear tail lights. Very, very much looks like a lot of the Toyota products as it would. And you've got that little shelf. Definitely has a sporting look to it. And there's nothing offensive about the styling of an RX. And this is an RX 350. You can also get hybrid models, but the interior is literally one of the nicest. Again, they've come so far in this game that one could argue that they even outdo Mercedes and BMW in the quality department. They've got a sunroof on top, soft touch door handles. And how about those mirrors with the chrome little strip on there? And how about the front end? Also looks very aggressive because now you have the underbite. So it has a very aggressive looking chin on there. Little vents, brushed aluminum all the way around. Kind of gives a nice border to this big menacing grill, which some people like, some people not. And you have these very low profile headlights with the wonderful LED strip. So I wish I could tell you more about things that are problematic with these vehicles, but there's the truth of the matter is there's really nothing consistent. You even go to NHTSA website for recalls, there's not a lot going on there. And these vehicles just generally don't break. They wear out, sure, eventually with time, do your oil services, put brakes and tires on it. 
but they just don't wear out. And as a result, if you want something that looks good, goes good, likely outlast you and me, this is your vehicle, the Lexus RX. And the next vehicle right here is number five on my list and it's the Porsche 911. I've always had a soft spot for, I've owned several myself because they truly bring it to the table, the performance attributes. And not only do they perform well, they've got the reputation for racing, but they've also got the quality and that's where Porsche wins. These vehicles are built to last and they're built to last for many, many years. But this one is a Porsche 991 Generation GT3. How do we know that? Right there, it says Porsche GT3. It has the center mounted dual exhaust tips, lots of great vents, accents on the rear splitter. You've got big wings. Of course, this is a 3.8 liter flat six engine parked outside. You've got the gearbox in front of it and then the cabin. So these cars have always been a little tail happy, but over the years, Porsche has finally engineered out most of the tail happy aptitude. These cars also had the wonderful center lock hubs. You can see one big spin and the whole wheel comes off. No sunroof. And you've got the red brake calipers. If you've got the yellow, that usually means you have carbon ceramic, but this is the steel rotors. This one has the PDK transmission and as you can see, Alcantara split with leather interior. Top quality materials. And look at the aggressive spoiler. The Porsche 911 always has that stance, which is to die for. I mean, look at that. It always looks very aggressive. But Porsche is up the ranks this year by JD Powers and Associates to an average brand 86 out of 100 problems per 100 vehicles. That's right, well ahead of the 118 average that the industry sees with luxury cars. And the Porsche 911 does even better than the brand average. These come in with 57 problems per 100 vehicles. Porsche really does put all their heart, soul, R&D into making the 911 better on every single generation, not just from a performance standpoint or efficiency perspective, but also reliability. These cars, you could run across the country and back 10 times over and not worry about them breaking down. You sure can't really say that about, about this brand. The Ferrari isn't the car that's going to run forever. These do take a lot of maintenance and don't hold a candle for reliability compared to a 911. So the next vehicle on my list that I would actually recommend would be the X5, but only, only with the B58 engine, which is BMW's latest turbo six cylinder engine. Did you know it's also equipped in the new Toyota Supra? Yes, they're actually quite a bit more robust than the last generation six cylinder engines. But let's take a quick look. First of all, you have the latest LEDs by BMW. You've got the oversized grill, which opens and closes for more airflow. You get additional beefiness looking from the front end and some great aluminum wheels. How about these little vents? And how about a rocker panel that has all this tip chrome on it? But let's not forget about all the plastic cladding to protect the vehicle from gravel off the road. Beautiful dual layer luggage rack up top to haul your, all your garbage and junk to the trash compactor. You have soft touch. And you've got the latest tail lights, which means this vehicle looks as exciting as it is to drive because it has the 40i. As I said, this is the only engine you want in the X5. It also has the one and two tips, but look, it's fake. There's a fake tailpipe in there. And the side looks very strong and menacing, almost pickup truck like. Then we look in there and the interior is as good as it gets in the BMW world with the latest and greatest iDrive system. So this is another one of those phenomenons that I've explained the X5s in the past. Do not buy anything with the older generation turbo sixes. The B, the N55 was a problematic engine, idle problems, leaks, all kinds of things. Although they were better than the N54 before it, the N54 was the twin turbo six cylinder run from, don't walk, run from that from any vehicle in the BMW lineup that has the N54 twin turbo, stay away from that engine. But BMW's finally got their act together and the B58 that's tucked under the hood of this rig is far more robust than anything BMW's put in under their hood since they've turbocharged six cylinder engines. Otherwise go naturally aspirated for many moons ago. But stay away from the M cars unless you're willing to pay the price for maintenance and repairs. And definitely stay away from diesel if you're not tolerant of additional repairs there because of the emission system equipment. And definitely stay away from the 50 series vehicles because they have the twin turbo 4.4 liter V8 that is known for coughing up oil, eating turbos, burning the heads and chomping on batteries. So this is the X5 you want, and you're gonna to wanna to keep this for five to 10 years at least because the first few years is heavy depreciation. After that, it's all cherry on the cake. The next vehicle on my list is here and it's guaranteed to impress and it's the Lexus GX460. Why? Well, it's got the classic Lexus front grille. 
It has a 4.6 liter V8 that makes about 300 horsepower and has all the great add-ons here. This is after all Toyota's big brother Lexus and of course it has all the quality built inside to keep this thing running for years and years. Now you've got some pretty cool headlights on these. You've got some really aggressive front spoiler. I mean look at that. It does look very powerful. You've got these wonderful alloy wheels by Lexus right there. You've got running boards for their short in-laws to be able to hop, skip, and jump, or those little leprechauns like to jump in the back seat. Awesome little mirrors. Look at the chrome accent and the lights on the sides. More chrome and more chrome on top to haul around the garbage and junk on the roof. And you look here, very versatile, very utilitarian, but maximizes the space because after all, the most efficient space is a square. It has Lexus conventional rear tail lights and of course you can haul a pile of junk you can haul a trailer or boat because you have a hitch Lexus and it's the GX 460 meaning this is also this is a body on frame design and so it's as rugged as a pickup truck and as luxurious as anything you could possibly imagine from the German brands it has crawl control multi-terrain select it also has under view here as well and this vehicle is as capable off-road as it is on road this actually does look a little stylish. Look at the flare on the back moving along to the side. And the interior is, again, as luxurious as anything you would expect from a top-end luxury vehicle. So at the end of the day, this is the type of vehicle you would buy today, and you could own it 20 years later because it will last the test of time. The Lexus GX 460. So the next vehicle on my list is right here. It's another Porsche and it's the Porsche Macan. And these vehicles are made in Leipzig, Germany. And as a result, a lot of the care and attention go into these vehicles. They're well made, they're well crafted. The materials are top shelf, but look at all the lines. They all match up very exceptionally well. Rims are very nice. High quality headlight components, spoilers, sunroof. And look at even the way this is nicely amalgamated here. And you've got the LEDs on the mirrors. Soft touch, but much more better blended in there. PDK transmission with one of the best and nicest interiors you'll find in this industry and segment. And the latest have these wonderful rear tail light assembly with the full light bar across the back. And you'll notice this one has quad tail pipes. That's because it's a Macan S. There's also a whole lot of other variations of the Macan. That's what makes it very interesting is that depending on your price point, you can afford to buy one in just about every budget. For example, you've got a Macan, Macan S, Macan GTS, and you can also get a turbo. Now engines can vary from a two liter turbo in the base model, you can get up to a three liter twin turbo V6, and you can now get a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6. So lots of variations and lots of different availability and lots of different budget availability. JD Power also ranked them the most dependable subcompact SUV on the market for 2021. And actually the wife and I were shopping for one of these last year and found it very difficult to find the right vehicle because there's so few of them out there and many of them have very high miles on them because they're just so long lasting. They also hold their value and they're good for the long term. You won't lose your shirt if you own one for more than five years. The next vehicle on my list is really, really hard to deny. I've got actually a couple of friends with vehicles like this, actually older generation ones, and they just won't give them up. They just keep going on and on and on. And what we have is the Acura MDX like we have here. Now this one is a hybrid, but of course you'll see hybrid. You've got the cool mirrors on here. You've also got the soft touch handles right there. And of course you've got some pretty slope back end, makes it look, look very, very sporty for sure from the back. You also get some really beautiful wheels on these vehicles, almost like a diamond cut essentially. Beautiful rocker panels with chrome accents, standard style sunroof, and chrome luggage racks to haul more junk and garbage around. How about the headlights that look a little bit confused, although very complex and quite interesting, almost sort of mesmerizing. And then you have a cool grill and the big A that just shows bold and tells you who's the tough guy around this town. Of course, you've got the chrome on the front lip as well, headlight washers, and a pretty powerful bulging hood. That also definitely gives it a little more menacing look and strength from the front end. The side looks quite sporty, and the interior is extremely well appointed, almost better than a lot of the vehicles I've seen in the German arena these days. Very, very high quality, slightly small on the infotainment screen, but otherwise very well made. Now essentially Acura's upscale Honda, so you've got to expect a certain amount of dependability with Three and a half liter V6, makes about 290 horsepower. You've got all wheel drive system there. Would you believe records show that almost 12% of MDX owners keep their vehicles longer than 15 years? That talks about serious satisfaction by owners. Unfortunately, there are a few issues along the way. 
Some of them have been known to crap out check engine lights. You get rough idles from time to time. And there have been cases where the trannies blow out due to contamination in the torque converter. But they've also been ranked very high by experts because of their safety ratings. Partially because their headlights are extremely powerful and they have great child restraint systems built on board. So all in all, the Acura MDX is one that you could buy today. And again, similar to the Lexus, you could own it for the next 20, 25 years. Probably put a few dollars here and there, but otherwise basically trouble-free motoring. And the 10th vehicle that you can own outside of warranty is... No, it's not a Kia. It's a GS. That's right, the Lexus. Right there, again, we have a Lexus GS model. This one is a GS350. Beautiful headlights on there. I love this stunning color. In the sunlight, it absolutely beams. You've got the little grills on the front end. How about the large oversized grill that some people, again, don't love a whole lot. But that's seriously one of the most offensive parts to the entire car because the rest of the car looks absolutely beautiful. In that shade of blue, we've got an F-Sport badge right there. You've got beautiful gunmetal gray rims right there. And how about those mirrors with a cool little strip. An interior that is also very, very nicely equipped. Slightly less modern and slightly dated. However, the quality is certainly there and will last the test of time. You've also got a sunroof and soft touch handles. Because it's a GS, they almost always have these types of fitments. You've got a little spoiler on there. You've got these very, very cool aftermarket almost looking tail lights and again Lexus we have the all-wheel drive GS 350 and this makes it very functional for poor weather driving here we have one and two tailpipes and as we're talking F Sport 350 basically means it's the blinged out version with the 311 full-on horsepower makes it very peppy fun sporting and stylish all in one package very easy to love Really, you could own this car for 15 years and you would never have to worry because, in fact, Lexus and many critics say the GS is seriously, unfortunately missed because they are no longer making this model and it is, in fact, the most reliable luxury vehicle in the Lexus brand. On top of all of this, I'm sure you'd like to know which engines specifically will not last over 60,000 miles. Be sure to check out that video right there. It's going to tell you the whole story. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.